Hello, hello, Heather Jean here, Confidence Through Cabaret, all things confidence. I'm so excited that you're here for this episode. Uh, wherever you're tuning in from, if you're on YouTube, uh, like and subscribe to this podcast. If you're on your podcast, you're more than welcome to watch it on, on the YouTube channel or st st hang around here, you know, because we love having our audio guests as well. Um, please like and subscribe here as well. This is a really special episode episode because this is a podcast episode about podcasting and other things. So I am really proud and pleased to present our episode uh, guest today, which is Haley Hayhurst, who is is an, a podcast know everything. So <laughs> I know I'm really building this up, Haley. <laughs> Seriously now though, um, Haley is a podcast producer. We'll talk about what that means, but if you have or want to have a podcast, you are going to want to hang around for this. Um, Haley is also a, a visibility coach and we are so aligned in our thinking about mindset and how important that is for showing up. And you know, if you've been around Confidence or Cabaret for a while now, you know that we are all about owning your space and taking up space and raising your voice and sharing your message. So I'm, I'm so aligned with Haley's message here on visibility coaching. Welcome Haley. Thank you for being with us all the way from Espresso Podcast. Thank you. I'm super excited to get this conversation going today. I have so much to share and I know it's going to be great. So, so okay. So, shall we start with your your Espresso Podcast? Yeah, definitely about how my business got started and all of that. Please. Yeah. How do which came first, the visibility coaching or the podcasting? So I started off as a virtual assistant, actually. So it started off in the first thing I did around podcasting was in college. I had my own podcast with my friend and we just put out a weekly podcast. And that's where I really learned all the details about marketing. And it's never like, you know, I went to school for journalism. I did audio production classes, but I never did any marketing classes until I was into podcasting. And so then I got that hands-on experience. And then going forward, I was gr I grew up in Las Vegas. That's where, you know, I had my podcast. And then I was laid off because of COVID. Just like many of us, I was laid off because of COVID. And so I moved to Seattle on just like a whim. I was like, okay, I need out of here. I've never lived anywhere other than Las Vegas. And so I moved to Seattle only knowing one person decided I should probably start making money. So I just started doing some podcast editing and virtual assistants. And I loved the whole podcast editing part, but I realized people needed more help than just editing their podcast, right? You can make it sound professional, but you need to put a professional image out there to make it successful almost, right? And so if you're trying to grow your audience and you're trying to get seen, trying to share your voice, that's really where I love to help because there's tons of podcasts out there, but there's not tons of great podcasts out there, right? Everyone has a message to share. It's just how you share it is the difference between being seen and being heard and just being another podcast on the 2 million statistics, right? Is it two, Is it two million? million? Wow. Yeah, there's a lot. And a lot of people, so there's not two million active podcasts. A lot of people start. They start with one episode, then they either get scared or they are like, oh my gosh, this is so much work. Or they're just nervous to reach out to, to guests and don't want to continue just doing solo episodes. So, I mean, there's so many factors that go into podcasting, but a lot of people do start with one, five, and then quit. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. See that. So, so I'm gonna let it go going on here. here. It's never it's happened never with a headphone. Are you getting the echo? No, I, I'm not. Okay, good. Um, so, where do you start with a podcast? Yeah, so to start off with a podcast, really just starts off with an idea. 
what I encourage my clients to do when they come to me and they're like, okay, I want to do a podcast, but I have so many things I can talk about. The number one thing I tell them to do is what do you want to talk about? Okay, write them all down. And then who do you want to help? Because almost every podcaster wants to help someone, either entertaining them, sharing a story, giving them confidence advice, right? Everyone wants to help someone. So it's really just narrowing down to who it is you actually want to help and then going off that idea. Okay. So how much of starting a podcast is about mindset and how much of it is about tech? And I, I, I probably don't even mean a percentage, but there's got to be both of those things coming into it, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I would say it's mainly mindset, honestly. I mean, you have to get your equipment, you have to get your platform set up, you have to get a microphone or headphones or whatever it may be, but you can get all that and still not start. And that's the issue. Like, I have so many people that come to me and they're like, Haley, I can record episodes, but I literally can't get myself to promote them, put them up. I can't get myself to post them. Or on the other side of the spectrum, they'll be like, I have had this amazing idea for a year now, and now other people are stepping into this space and taking my idea. And that's like, you just need to go out there and do it, right? You just have to take that step. It's like your first episode is not going to be great. Your launch might not be great, but that doesn't matter. Like, if you just continue to put out content, you're going to get better, right? You're going to get better. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think that's the thing is we always always seem to think we have to know know everything everything first. Like I've met lots of people who say I've been researching podcasting for a year and I'm like, yeah, or you could just start it in a few Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Because how much experience could you have gotten that year? Right. So much. So much. And I mean, I have a course that teach you teaches people about podcasting, right? It has everything from marketing to editing to how to get guests, how to promote all of those things like setup. But I mean, that's helpful. But you have to at least have the mindset that you're going to start this podcast and giving yourself a date of when you're going to start this podcast. I love that. And where can people find out more about the course? Yeah, so you can head over to my Instagram, Espresso Podcast Production, E-S-P-R-E-S-S-O, Podcast Production, um, and just send me a DM. I currently have a wait list right now for the launch of this course, but it's going to be very, like, it's going to have everything that you need to start your podcast successfully. I mean, not ever like I love helping my clients monetize their podcasts, but that's not everyone's goal. Sometimes it is a confidence booster. Sometimes it's a way for them to show off to their friends and family. But if you are looking to monetize, come talk to me because I can give you all of those tips on how to get there. Amazing. Amazing. So and on your on your profile, we have espresso podcast production dot com. Yes, obviously, it's not a clickable link. So I've left spaces between it if you're watching this on the podcast. But um, that's just for ease of reading it. Um, so espresso as in the coffee. Is, yes. that, is that where that came from? It is. I love coffee. If you can see my background, it's like all coffee. Um, and I just when I moved to Seattle, that was my favorite part. I mean, like I said, I didn't really know anyone here. I didn't know anything about the city. I'd only visited once before for a weekend before I made the move. And so I was just testing out different coffee shops all around Seattle just to like see the city, meet people. And so I just, I was like, okay, I need to name my business this. It, and co- Seattle is a great, if you're, if you're not from that part of the world or familiar with it, you, Seattle's a great place for coffee. I so mean, good. And there's literally Seattle Coffee Company, so yeah. Yeah. but <laughs> so not good. the one, not that I'm trying to plug that. But I just, you know, it really is like a, a big place for coffee. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah I love that. Um, and and actually, the West Coast in general. I I still I still um like I mean I, this isn't really the purpose of our conversation today, but I'm still like, what makes somebody go? Huh, I've, I've only been there once. I don't know anybody, or not really. Uh, I'm going to move there. Like, <laughs> 
you know, I just was like, right? Yeah, I mean, it really did. I moved in with my my best friend from high school, and so that worked out in that way. But it was just, I was like, I have nothing going on. I was living with my mom. I graduated um, from UNLV, uh, the university in Las Vegas, in December 2019. And I had this dream of going to the Peace Corps. Everything was set to go. I was supposed to go to Cambodia. And then COVID really put a wrench in that. So I was maybe in a little mid quarter life crisis. I'm not too sure, but, uh, I just, I just moved. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. Cause that takes a lot of, that takes a lot of guts to do that. It really does. It was fun. It was probably one of the best things I've done for myself. And very different to Vegas. I would imagine. Oh Nothing my gosh. Very there. different. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. rain. Yeah. The rain, the rain. I'm from Vancouver. So we're very similar. Um, yeah climates uh so i i fully understand that that the, the, the rain's a big thing that's why there's so many coffee places because we have to be able to duck into places i imagine so okay exactly. so 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 um so and then but also you describe yourself Haley, as a as a business as a sorry as a visibility coach so how does that play into the whole business model are they, are they part of the same thing or do you have clients for separate parts of your business? So I do have clients for separate parts of my business, but it really ties together. And the reason for that is since I said there's so many podcasts, I don't want to like overwhelm anyone when I say this, but your podcast has to be more than just one episode once a week, right? And so if you are, have like a solid following of people who are just like, loving your podcast and loving everything that you're sharing, um, they're going to want to come and see more of you. If you, they're spending an hour a week with you, they're going to want to come see who they're listening to, what they do in their free time, like how they became a part of their lives almost, right? Like podcast hosts, if you're really following them, are part of your life. I mean, an hour drive is entertained by them. And so you have to be showing your face, getting out there and getting seen for your audience to stay with you. And it's scary. I have tons of clients who are afraid to put reels on their Instagram or afraid to share like experiences that they're having with their, their family. So if they have like a cool weekend of family fun or something, right? Like, and your podcast relates to that, your audience wants to see it. And so that's what I mean when I say your podcast has to be more than one episode once a week. You have to be sharing content and value on another platform for your audience to stay. I think that's I, I think that's something that is sounds obvious, but I don't think a lot of people are talking about that. I agree. I agree. And one of the things that I have my clients like, I really tell everyone this. If the only time you're posting on social media is when you have a new episode, why would someone follow you, right? If, you're, if your Instagram is only new episode, photo of the guest, new episode, photo of the guest, like you could also just subscribe to them on Apple Podcasts or Spotify and get a notification when a new episode is out. And so the value part is what people really want because people do like to hear, but they also like to see the things that they're they're listening that they're listening to yeah and I, I, this is the first time i'm having this thought because it sounds like it would be really obvious but i don't know that i have ever had that thought before <laughs> I, I mean, mean that's I why i'm around right <laughs> yeah it's, well thank goodness i mean i was already on social media first anyway yeah i think a lot of times the appeal for people to have a a podcast is because they don't have to show up like they can be on audio only mm -hmm. um and and you know if i say oh if you got a youtube channel with them up they, they, they freak out sometimes you can they have a physical reaction <laughs> yeah and i mean i have a client who doesn't want to show her face on social media and that's totally fine there's different things she can post um she has a true crime podcast and so tons of content out there for her to post um tons of content that she can create it doesn't have to show your face 
I have on my Instagram, if you scroll down a little bit, I think it's a real challenge where you don't have to show your face. And so like showing off your workspace is one. Showing off your city can be another. Like those are reels that you don't have to show your face in if you're on Instagram. I mean, you can do the same on Facebook with posts. That's really true. And now we have Canva and so many other places mm -hmm. where we can go to make thumbnails and, you know, show our guests face if they're happy to or whatever for our posts. So yeah, there is, there is a lot that you can do. Okay. Absolutely. So it's so, so, so we talked about that whole, whole kind of mindset about like, you know, being ready to show up. I think for me, a lot of what people struggle with is the fear of tech. I know I certainly did. Um, I think it's different for different generations. It depends on, on, on who you're talking to, but certainly if you're talking to people in Gen X, they kind of go, no, <laughs> no, no, the tech is way too much. Um, and, and I, I don't know, you know, if, if you go on Amazon, just like just Amazon and, and Google like microphones, there would be so, so many, many. Would be <laughs> mind blowing. Right. So even that, I mean, I started this without a microphone at all because I was just so blown away and I was like, fine, you know what, I, there's stuff, it's not ideal, but the stuff built into my laptop and then that's, we can do that. I know that's not the best way to go in terms of quality, but the best way to go for me was to just start. Yeah, and, exactly. And then get going. So, but that fear of tech, like you said, you sort of said, oh, you know, find a, find a platform host, get a microphone. Like it, they're not hard things to do right but they're terrifying but, yeah yeah i totally agree with that that it does hold a lot of people back i mean if you're looking to start something that's free and you just want to do like basic beginner podcasting which is totally fine when you first start off see if it's even for you right sometimes you start and you're like mm, maybe this isn't for me and so Anchor is a good source. You can record your episodes directly onto there. Now it's free, so you do get what you pay for, right? And then eventually you'll want to move up. But I would recommend just starting with something simple like Anchor. And if you go to my website, um, I have a whole page of podcast equipment that I recommend. My mic that I use was like $70 on Amazon. I have a client who has three young children and to record her podcast episode she grabs her airpods and runs into her car for some alone time in a quiet space and so i mean that works for her too she has a good following um it doesn't always have to be very like thought out and you have to spend like tons of money on it now of course if you want a professional look and everything definitely i would encourage that but it's not it's not like what should be holding you back. I love that you said that. I love that because the how, if we get tripped up on that, we never get to that professional level ever. Exactly. Exactly. So just getting started. Um, and you, you, you know, yeah, do some research. Like Kaylee said with, you know, knowing who, who you're talking to and knowing, knowing what you, what you want to be talking about or what you, what you want to represent and then just get started. And I love that you said, like, you could do that in your car on your phone. Yeah, that's what she does. And I mean, it works well for her. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And then how do you, how do you recommend people find guests? Because that's the other thing is that if you assume that you're going to have guests, then people kind of freak out about where am I going to find people? I don't know people. Absolutely. So I highly recommend Facebook for finding guests or Instagram. So Facebook has a lot of groups that are just guest connection groups. Um, I think they're literally called podcast guest connections. There's two that I can send you the link later if you want to put it in the show notes or something. Yeah. But I am launching a podcast and I was looking for guests. I put my post up there and I got 75 people who responded. And that's like so many and of course I don't want to interview every single one of them so I just go through the applications one by one and reach out to those who I want to and I think it was like 30 people and so that's 30 weeks of content you know or I could spread it out and do some solo episodes in there 
you know, like people want to be guests on podcasts so badly right now. And if you go on Instagram, you can just message people and say, hey, I have a podcast. Would you like to be a guest? Here's a link to listen or something like that. And I'm going to, I'm going to assume people are going to say yes. So yeah, it's, yeah. it's not, it's not anything too difficult. You just have to put yourself out there. Yeah. And I mean, if you, if you're somebody who wants to do a long registration process, I've done a lot of those forms, then that's a different kind of, a kind of, tone to your podcast you might you might want to plan questions in advance I like to just read the profile and kind of get a feel for it and go actually this person has a message that that I, I hear a lot of questions about or, or a lot of interest in 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 my audience and so then I reach out that way it's uh, it's just not that deep but I know that there are a lot of people who really you know make it make it a a, a real professional a registration process and sifting process and scheduling process and and interview right and and Haley asked me the question before because we hadn't met before today I mean we we yeah. talked on, on messenger but but you know what should I prepare and I was like oh no you don't because for my tone it's much more about showing up and that uh, confidence and I think with confidence, it's about momentum and it's about conversation and it doesn't need a, a, a prepared answer to show up confidently. You know, it's it's kind of I choose my guests who I know are going to show up and be able to talk about what they want to what they do and what they want to be talking about. Absolutely. One of the things that I've been preaching a lot on my Instagram lately is this line that says, show off your personality, get more clients. And so I work with mainly female business owners who are coaches or any type of business who want to be more visible, want to get seen and want to share their message. And so what I mean by show off your personality, get more clients is it's really hard for people to get to know you through just Instagram posts or just 30 second Instagram reels. I mean, you can go live on Instagram or live on Facebook and that's pretty effective, but it's really hard to show off your personality through only photos and 30 second reels. So a lot of my clients are realizing that they want to have a deeper connection with their clients, their potential clients, and they want to reach more of them. So if you have a bubbly personality, of course, I can come through on your photos, but it just, it won't be the same. Or on the other side, if you're very introverted and you don't like to post photos of yourself, you can start a podcast. And I know it can be hard for some introverts to even think about starting a podcast. I had someone come to me, one of my clients actually, she was like, I'm so nervous in front of the microphone. And I was like, okay, just think of it. It's literally just you and your microphone. You can edit out whatever you don't want people to hear. You can tailor it to however you feel confident. And so just putting out a podcast lets your audience get to know you on a whole nother level. You know, I mean, you can make it business oriented and still show off who you are. You can make it very interview based and still show off who you are. Or you can just bite the bullet and make it just a solo podcast. And then they'll really know who you are, right? Wow. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For for sure, they'll know who you are because you're going to have to share some personal stuff or mm -hmm. some experiences, you know, even if it's a business uh, podcast. I think um, I tend not to do that. I tend to do that more on my YouTube channel. I like to do a video on my YouTube channel and I, I, I do upload it. But I tend to, I like to think of it differently. It's a, that's, I've never noticed that before. So if I, if I do a podcast and then put it up on the podcast, I'll always put it on the YouTube channel as well. Um, but if I'm doing something like showing up solo and really talking about what's going on and, and what's, what my experience or my learning is, I tend to think I'm going to make a video mm -hmm. and I'm going to put that on YouTube and then I upload the audio to the podcast. Yeah. And that works too. That definitely works too. But it's interesting. I've never thought about that shift of like, I always, I, I wouldn't ever be thinking I'm making an audio podcast and I'll put it up on YouTube. I always think I'm making a video, like I, almost as if I'm talking to people 
in the room. Right. Uh, that's because I'm an extrovert. And I think that's the beauty of podcasts is that it is for everybody. It definitely is. Yeah. So if you're an introvert, you can plan your questions in advance. I, I even I can do that for introverted guests. I can give them a list of questions that I plan to, you know, the flow of, of it and so on. So it really helps for people who need to think things through before that comes out of their mouth, then it really is helpful for them. And that's the beauty of, of podcasts. It's so flexible. Exactly. Exactly. And usually when you go just off of whatever you're thinking or whatever the conversation is, you get a better conversation than like a very bullet pointed out talk. Right. I mean, when you're first starting off or if that's like the way that you flow, that's totally fine. Go with that. But if you can just talk and get to know people and be like very curious, it's a whole nother conversation. So tell us about your first podcast episode. What what was it like for you? Oh my gosh. Okay. So this was back in college. I had a pro wrestling podcast. Can you believe that? It was so funny. Whenever I tell people that, they're like, what? And so... I was very into, like, female wrestling. I mean, it was, like, WWE, AEW, but, like, I – we so it was me and my co-host, and we talked about, like, the female wrestlers and how cool and powerful they were and all of those amazing things. And I remember the first episode was so scary, so scary, because my co-host had been listening to – we're watching wrestling since she was like eight years old or maybe even younger and her family was into it and all of this. And then I just like came across it one day on, I forget even what channel it was on, but I just came across it with my sister and I was like, what is this? Like, this is so cool. I love this. And I was like, I don't know, maybe like 18 or something. So I found it like 10 years later than her. So I was not as well versed in the wrestling world as she was. So I was like a little intimidated, but I was like, okay, let's just do this. Let's just put it out there. And we connected with a lot of really cool people, a lot of really cool people. And like I said, that's where, you know, my business really came from being able to learn like the marketing side, how to actually not hustle but how to like work to get it seen and work to get client or you know guests on and all of those things and so it was scary it was really scary and it, it had a lot of edits in it so <laughs> I mean no one would ever know but it had a lot of edits in it that's uh, I, I love that I love that that it's it's scary and then and then there's there's all kinds of imposter boys coming up about like you know comparing yourself and you know uh, questioning and 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 you know even the ability to edit because I always talk about perfectly imperfect yeah like I try not to edit I try not to worry about uh you know cutting out parts that weren't quite right or um and I know that a lot of the podcasts that I've helped people start, as in mindset helps people, I'm not techie at all. So you wouldn't want that advice from me, but that's <laughs> what Haley's for. Um, but I but I, I know that a lot of them really want it to be perfect and they'll record 50 times yeah. and it'll be polished. And again, that's the beauty because they can do that. I don't have the time for that, but I, I also don't have the attention to detail. I, I, I'm much more authentic when it just happens. So I'm a perfectly imperfect person. But there's you who you, 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 you know, you're, you're comparing yourself, you're scared, you, and you did it anyway. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, it was a very unique situation because I was more comparing myself to my co-host rather than because, I mean, wrestling is just a bunch of men, right? all the podcasts that we really found before we started ours were just men in their basements who absolutely no editing, absolutely no production. <laughs> like that wasn't what we were scared of. It was more of just like being females in a very male dominated field, really trying to like show off like that we actually know what we're talking about. It's the same with like, Knowing football, right? I saw this meme a while ago and I always laugh with it with my boyfriend because he knows everything about football, right? And so it was something like, if women like football, they'll ask you what the, the blood type of the 
1988 like Seahawks <laughs> quarterback was <laughs> and I just feel like that's so true for so many fields right as women we have to feel like well we shouldn't feel like this but we do feel like if we're in a male dominated field we have to one up we have to really like make it polished make it amazing um I work with women in the business industry there's so much competitiveness but that's not what I that's not what I encourage. I really encourage my clients and potential clients and all of those people who want to start a podcast not to feel like they're competing with others, especially if it's a male in a male run industry or, you know, one of my clients, the one who records in her car with her AirPods, she is an insurance agency owner and insurance is so male dominated and that's what her entire podcast or her entire business is about really ending the bro culture as she calls it and so i mean there's just so many standards that we hold ourselves to but it's really just getting out there and doing it it really is it, it really is and and i and i think um uh, it's when I worked in the corporate world, which, you know, has been my business for over 25 years until COVID, uh, I I worked in predominantly male environments. And I, I, that wasn't a choice that I made. That wasn't a niche that I chose. It, it chose me. Yeah. And it was very much because I talk about personality preferences and it, part of our preferences are around feelings versus thinking. And I think a lot of um, men were quite intimidated by that. And it's not very common where the female ha in the room has the the that that kind of edge of that, and so I, I really relate to what you're saying about how we. But do we though now? I mean, we're all online now, right? Right. Like, because of COVID, if not before, but certainly because of COVID, there are so many people online starting businesses, sharing their message, owning space looking for their audience and 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 i i i want to say like let's stop doing that let's stop feeling like we have to be one step ahead exactly in order to be valid or show up or do the thing yeah that's exactly right like i was on a podcast last week and he ended his show by saying something along the lines of we surround ourselves with entrepreneurs so we think everyone's an entrepreneur when really not everyone is it's a very select few people but as entrepreneurs that's the only people we surround ourselves with and so we have such a standard to hold ourselves to because of this false imaginative world that we've created or what we've surrounded ourselves with. And I just thought that was a really interesting perspective because I've never thought of it that way. And then when I, after that, I was like looking around, I was like, yeah, not everyone is an entrepreneur. Like not everyone has, you know, the, the bandwidth to do this or like the energy to do this or the confidence to do this. And so, yeah, I just thought that was an awesome way to think about it. Yeah, it's very, it's very interesting. It's also very interesting with how many people want to have a podcast or want to start an online community or business or whatever it is, um, and fail to get the what they what they were hoping for out of it. And I think, you know, there is, there is, this is a real time where people are bringing forward their talents, and their experience, and the and they're sharing that in ways that we've never experienced before. And uh, I would hate to think that that all boils down to everybody wants to make 10K or more uh, a month. And if we don't, then we'll go back to our day job or, you know, I would really hope that this whole kind of sharing is authentic and continues. Yeah. And, and that's why I'm such a big advocate of a podcast. I didn't set up a podcast to monetize it. I didn't set it up for any other reason than I wanted people to be heard and I wanted people to find one another. And so I'm saying here, if you want to start a podcast or you want to grow your podcast or your audience or your, you know, the, the polish on your podcast, then talk to Haley. Because I'm not all things to all people. I'm not trying to like find my people so I can sell to them. I, 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 I don't need to do that. I, I need for 
for people to be able to share their message. And I genuinely believe that podcast is a great way of doing that, that showing up and being visible is a great way of doing that. And that's why I invited you to be here. Thank you so much. Yeah, exactly. So Haley, I have a few questions. Okay, I'm excited. Okay. <laughs> so this is Confidence Through Cabaret, which means that we, um, we talk about cabaret as our, as our analogy to our way of showing up. So cabaret, um, when I started cabaret, when I realized that I needed to, to do cabaret, I didn't know what it was, which sounds really weird, but I was running big conferences. I was, you know, larger than life, running around the room, no problem with voice, never needed a microphone. But I was showing up as a persona, a work persona that I created that was comfortable and confident because I knew I'd put in the work because I knew I knew what I was doing um, because I'd been hired by those clients. Um, but to show up, I started showing up that way everywhere. Like that's how I would show up at a party or that's how it should anywhere. And so, so I wanted to get to the showing up as an authentic me and cabaret has been my method of doing that. And so cabaret um, as I define it, and there's a large history of, you know, vaudeville and all kinds of, of, of factors that, that have built um, cabaret to what it is. But, um, but it's, it's typically a small venue. So comedians have to start in a cabaret by definition because they don't start off in the comedy club or the comedy store unless they have contacts. Mm -hmm. um, and so it could be comedy. It could be singing. A lot of singers showed up that way. Certainly Bette Midler, when she describes how she used to work in the clubs, they were cabaret clubs. Um, you know, burlesque, which is what I do, is, is uh, you know, a, a, something people relate to with cabaret. Um, dra drag, I know that's become a, a big um, kind of public uh, thing. It's, it's, it's goes a lot back, goes back a lot further than, than RuPaul's Drag Race and so yeah. on, but it's become very big and commercial. Um, so, so, but you know, there are any number of ways to show up on a slide, uh, sorry, to show up on a stage in a small club. Um, so if you were performing cabaret, what would you choose to do? What would you be doing on your stage? Oh my gosh, that's such a good question. <sighs> I mean, I love talking. Okay, I cannot dance or anything musically with my body. So I think I would probably attempt to do some sort of like stand up comedy or something like that. I it would be so bad at it, but it would be so fun. I studied abroad in Prague and one of my favorite bars, they had a night that was stand up comedy, but it was all in check. I had no idea what was going on. I was just sitting in the back with like a beer and my friends and it was like one of the most fun things of my whole life. And I could not understand a word they were saying. And so I think just like the energy that that brings is what I would love to, to put out into the universe. So I think oh. it would have to be that. I love that. I love that. Because feeding off of that energy is just, it, it, it's like the base human condition of like, this is what we're supposed to do. We're supposed yeah. to act. I love that. I, I, the thought of doing comedy terrifies me. Me too. <laughs> um, I would rather do that than sing. But can I just bust a myth here? I am a paid burlesque performer. I do not learn choreography well. I am not rhythmic. I, I don't dance particularly well. Um, but I dance. Um, I, 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 I know how to move my body as everybody does if we get out of our own head. And I know what my character or message or narrative is that mm -hmm. I'm putting across in the three to five minutes. That's awesome. And so when I show up on a stage in costume, that's why I like burlesque because it's costume. It doesn't have to be stripping. I mean, I, I went to burlesque last night and at least four of the eight acts, well, probably five out of the eight acts, wasn't stripping. You know, it was so. A lot of times, people think, "Oh, burlesque, you have to take your clothes off." You don't. Um, it, it, it's it's it, there's different forms of burlesque, of course, but um, so you don't have to be able to dance. You just have to be able to tell your story using your body. 
That's and a good or, way to think about it. And or costume. So I'm also an aerial dancer and uh, and pole is my favorite. Um, and I always thought, oh, well, I can be on a stage with pole much easier or or a hoop or something much easier than I can be on a stage without it. Right. Because that's my prop. Like, oh, look at the shiny pole. Right. Like, I, but, but actually, it's just your body is being that prop to tell the story. Yeah. I grew up in Las Vegas, like I said, and I was totally surrounded by that all growing up. I tried pole dancing classes. I never got the core strength I quite needed, but I could do some twirls and stuff. But the aerial hoops was always my favorite. It's like so beautiful. And even when you don't know what you're doing, it just looks so good. And that was always my favorite. I've been trying to find somewhere in Seattle that has it, but I haven't quite found a place. So still on the lookout for that yeah I know that there are places because I know people in Seattle who do it so it's it's worth looking at also um if so so here's the thing so I'm not I I'm I have no reason to convince you to do pole or any aerial <laughs> but if we think about it like people will always say oh you have to have really good core strength or you have to have really good you know upper body strength or whatever it is um you build that, right? Like you start on the floor, you start, let's say it's a pole or even a hoop. You start by walking around it or, or, or touching it or getting a grip and you, mm. you learn the real basics, right? That's the same thing as what we're talking about with the podcast here. You're very right. You're really right. I never thought of it like that. Right. You don't have to have the microphone. You don't have to have the 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 box lights or the ring light or the you know, you don't have to have all that. Right. You build all that. That's such a beautiful connection. Thank you. That's why I use that's why we're confidence through cabaret. That's why I use that whole analogy, because everything you need to know about what you're building is is the, is is that same structure. Right. And nobody's going to go to a pole dancing class and go, oh, well. Uh, yeah, I can do tricks way up there in the air. They're just not. You yeah. have to have the right mindset. If your mind wanders, you will fall. So you have to be fully present in the moment. You have to learn how to, you know, all, all of the, the basics. And then you learn a climb. And then you learn to climb. And so on, right? It's the same thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think one of the things that held me back was mindset in these pole classes. It was pretty close to the strip. Um, the, there's just, there were so many women in there who were just so beautiful and doing crazy stuff in the sky. And I was like sweaty and couldn't get up the pole. And so it was just, I was like, this is a beginner's class. Why are there so many experts here? Yeah. And yet every single one of those started off as sweaty and not being able to get up the pole. Absolutely. Every single one of them, just like every single one of us who will start a podcast will have horrifying stories of you know the first time we we did a podcast and what was going on you know and we build from there yeah yeah okay so you're gonna go on the stage and you're gonna do stand up and aside from a microphone because you're it's a given you're gonna have a microphone but aside from that what one prop would you want to take with you on stage mm, what one prop let me think I feel like it would be some sort of big leather fur coat or something. I'm, like not real fur, but like some sort of like big <laughs> fur coat. I was like, oh no, I've got to edit. No, this is good. I know, no, I'm I'm vegan, so <laughs> no real fur at <laughs> all. Okay. But yeah, I think like a big like fur coat would be awesome. Okay, and what, what, why? Why choose that? Like, what, what does that represent? I have this one that's like, I guess it's called a bomber jacket or something like that. I've never heard that term before I bought it, and everyone had to inform me that's what it was. But it just, like, would make me feel, like, so comfortable and, like, make myself feel comfortable. But also, like, it's a statement piece, right? A huge fur coat is not something people are going to just – look past and so I think it'd be like comfort for me but a statement piece make me seem more confident <laughs> I love that I love that and also if it's big it, you're taking up more space by definition mm -hmm. exactly yeah which is which is always going to make you look more confident and own yeah. that space exactly ah, 
I, I love I love a I love a dual dual prop where it makes you feel more comfortable, but also is is something visual for your audience to symbolize how you want to come across. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and aside from using your own name, I want you to have something that represents fierce and confident, um, and you know that you own it. That you it doesn't matter whether you're thinking, oh, I don't know if I can do comedy. I don't care. <laughs> I wanted to suggest that you can. What's your stage name? Oh, that's a good one. Um, I've always liked the name Rosie, but I think it'd have to have like some sort of like adjective before it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's think. Maybe like like Queen Rosie is coming to mind, or something like that. I love that. Okay, so see, our stage name speaks to us, right? Yeah, like it, it does. It's there whispering, and so many times we question it. And we go, "This is this is this is coming back to our fear of tech thing, right? Like, or the how? It's like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. If this is, I don't know tech, right? This is the same thing." Yeah, I love that this is happening I love for it you. Too. <laughs> this is exciting because then we go, "No, I can't be a queen. You can be queen, Rose. You can be anything you want." Yeah. That's fabulous. That. Queen Rosie. I'm writing this down. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love that. And it, and it, there is something, there will be, there will be some sort of s symbolism for you that's, that, that, that speaks to. Um, typically in cabaret, we have a different, unless, unless you're doing something like, you know, comedy or singing, but if you're, if you're certainly, if you're in burlesque or, or drag, or we have a, a, a stage name. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, last night I was at, um, at a cabaret show and so everyone would call me by my stage name. But then when, when I meet them in the street, then they call me Heather. It's like a, it's just a, a, a different thing. And my stage name is simply also Helen. And that is an evolution of my previous stage name, which was Helen Back. And so again, it can change and we can grow. Helen Back mm -hmm. was about representing my journey and my anger and all the things in the past. And also Helen is being that I can also be anything else I want to be. So it's. That's that. the stage where I'm at right now. And everybody calls me Helen because people in the UK, for some reason, just can't hear the word Heather. And no matter how many times I say, I'm Heather, even at Starbucks, I'm not kidding you. If I say, <laughs> say what's the name for the cup? And I say, Heather, I, they write Helen every time. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> people don't believe me, but it happens. It's just, it's That's hilarious. That's so funny. Everyone thinks I'm Kaylee with a K. So oh. I don't know if it's how I say my name or something, but... Every time I go to Starbucks, well, first of all, if you see how my name is spelled, it's never going to be correct. But then there's always a K in there. And I'm just confused, just a little confused. <laughs> but hey, but hey, we live with that. So so maybe one day you'll be Rosie Kaylee or Kaylee, K, maybe K, Rosie K. Uh, maybe you'll be Queen Rosie K or something. I don't know. Maybe the K will just come in there. It's kind of like a little nod to, I see you people getting my name. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Oh, uh, Haley, I have loved this conversation with you. It's so much fun because I, I, I didn't I didn't expect it. We didn't plan it. I know. <laughs> it's, it's kind of all come back to full circle of like what you're talking about with podcasts. I so relate to, not because I know anything about podcasting, but because I can relate to it in, in my own analogies. And the fact that you're a, a visibility coach as well it's like this applies to whatever you want to do. Absolutely. Yeah, I've had so much fun with this conversation too. Thanks so much for having me on. Oh, it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Okay, one more time. Where can everybody find you? So you can find me on Instagram is where I mainly hang out. It's Espresso Podcast Production, Espresso with an X. And then I also have a Facebook group. It's called Espresso Growth for podcasters, entrepreneurs, and industry leaders. You can promote yourself in there. I do weekly trainings. In fact, after this, I'm going to record one about how to be a podcast guest or how to be a guest on podcasts. And then I always repost it to Instagram. So Instagram is really my main hub. If you want information on podcast equipment, you can also go to my website. And if you want information on the course, the DIY podcast course to launch your own podcast or start your own podcast, send me a message and I will get you on the wait list and you'll be the first to know when it's ready. I'm really excited for that. I'm really excited for that. And I am a member in your community. 
Um, and I'm excited for you, for you to, um, for everyone in Confidence to Cabaret community on Facebook as well, to be able to hear this message, because I know there are a lot of you that talk about having podcasts. Um, and, and, and it, you, you know, talk to Haley about, you know, what it's like, and then, and then try it and, and then decide, do I need more? What do I need? And, and then you can reach out and, and, you know, get involved in, having editing services or having, you know, reaching bigger audiences or monetizing or whatever your goals are. Um, but just get started. Exactly. Just bite the bullet and just do it. I mean, you're the only person that's holding yourself back and you're the biggest judge of yourself. So people aren't going to come on your podcast and think, what the heck is she talking about? Like, if they do that, they'll just switch to another one. They're not going to dwell on it as much as you may think. <laughs> That's really true. That's really true. We always think like people are thinking about us way more than they ever are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Thank you for that advice. Thank you for all of your advice and for sharing with us a, a little bit about you personally as well and a little bit about your your business and your beginnings and your experiences. And I really do hope that people will reach out um, and learn more about podcasting or or in fact visibility. Thank yes, you. yes, definitely reach out to me. I'm very friendly and my DMs are always open. You are, and that's how we met, which is so fun. Yeah. So thank you once again. I am Heather Jean. Uh, this has been Confidence Through Cabaret, the podcast. And I am available on all the socials as Confidence Through Cabaret. If you Google it, there's like two pages of Confidence Through Cabaret stuff now. It's fabulous. I'm so excited. The only place where we are not uh, Confidence Through Cabaret is uh, Twitter. We are at YB, YWYS, and Clubhouse. I am at Heather. Y B Y W Y S. And those six letters stand for a reminder that I am so passionate about, which is that it is your body, it is your world, and it is your stage. You get to take up space and own it and enjoy. Thank Bye. you so much again, Bye. Haley. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.